Hi, my name is Rosie Barnes and I'm a wind energy engineer. Today I'm going to show you how to use CAD, that's computer aided design, to design a wind turbine blade that you can 3D print and use with the Stellar Wind Energy Kit to do experiments with. I have one of the Stellar Wind Energy Kits here. I'm going to put a link on the website so you can order one from there if you don't have one yet. It comes with everything you need to make a small wind turbine and run experiments. It has the three different lengths of blades and a hub that you can put the blades in and as well as changing the size of the blade you can also change the number and the angle of the blades. Okay, the blade that we're going to make today will be a copy of this red blade. That's the longest blade that comes in the kit. It's 150 millimeters long. I have a drawing of it, so we're going to use that to make the part. I'm also going to show you how to change the design to make it longer or wider or a different shape instead of a rectangle. And then you can see if you can design a better, more efficient blade than the ones that come with the kit. Let's get started. The program that I'm going to use is called Tinkercad. It's an online CAD program. And this is great because it means that you don't need a very powerful computer to be able to use the program since it all runs on the cloud. We'll get started by logging in and opening a new part. I'd actually never used Tinkercad until a couple of days ago when I did a trial run for this tutorial. So I got started by doing some of the lessons on the Tinkercad website. And if you haven't used Tinkercad before, then I would suggest that you do the same. So at least you are comfortable with how to move the view around and get the basic idea of how Tinkercad works. You build up your parts using a combination of solid shapes and holes. Okay, so we're going to start with the end bit. This is what connects into the hub. So we need to make sure that this part is the exact same size and shape as the original blade so that we're sure that it's going to fit. The rest of the blade, you'll have a lot more flexibility to design it whatever way you think will be best. But since this part has to fit into another part, I think that it's probably a good idea that we copy this exactly the same. Okay, so it looks like a cylinder with two slightly thicker cylinders at either end. So we'll start by dropping a cylinder shape onto the top work plane. Then we change the dimensions to six millimeters by six millimeters for the diameter and eight millimeters for the length. Next, we will add the thicker parts at either end of that cylinder. So we add a work plane to the top of our first cylinder and drag a second cylinder onto that work plane. The dimensions are 6.3 millimeters by 6.3 millimeters diameter and 1.6 millimeters length. Then we need to align the two cylinders so they are centered. So we select both shapes, then click the align tool. We click the center alignment in two directions to get it how we want it. We repeat the same steps on the other end of our first cylinder. If your shape is not touching the first cylinder like mine is, then you can just select the part and press the letter D to drop it down onto the selected work plane. Next, I'll group the three cylinders so they are a single part and that way they will stay aligned in the way that we want. Okay, so that is the first part of the blade done. Next, we'll make the rectangle that is the main part of the blade. So we drag a block shape onto the work area and change its dimensions to 151 millimeters by 20 millimeters by 1.5 millimeters thick. It doesn't actually matter where you put each dimension as we're going to rotate it into position. We rotate the rectangle by clicking on these round arrows and typing in the number of degrees to rotate. I need to rotate 90 degrees in this direction. Now we need to put it on the bottom surface of our cylinder. So we drag a work plane there, we select the rectangle and press D to drop it down. Then we need to align it correctly. So select all of the parts and click the align tool. Then align the centers in two directions, just like we did before. If you want to change the length or width of the rectangle, now is a good time to do that. So you can just click on the rectangle and change the dimensions. Here is a short fat blade, or you could make a really long and skinny blade. You might need to drop it onto the right surface and align it again too. 
I'll just change it back to the original dimensions. 20 millimeters wide by 151.5 millimeters long. The next step is to add this spine down the middle of the blade. Now the dimension on the drawing is 40 millimeters long, but in this real blade, um, it has a longer spine, which is about 120 millimeters long. I would imagine that the spine is there to make the blade stiffer. And perhaps when they made the design in the drawing with a short spine, it wasn't stiff enough. So they extended that spine to make it stiffer. I'm going to make it 120 millimeters long, but you can use whatever dimension you think works best for your design. There are a couple of shapes that we could use in the basic shapes library. There is a cone, but I don't like it so much because it has a really pointy end. I think I like the look of the paraboloid better with its slightly rounded end. So I will make a work plane on the bottom surface of a cylinder part and then drag on the paraboloid. It has a diameter of 6.3 by 6.3 millimeters and I'll make it 120 millimeters long. Then select and press D to drop it onto the work plane. We align the centers and we group it into one part again. So that is the basic blade design complete. You can definitely feel free to leave it here if you like, or you can export the shape to either 3D print or laser cut it. If you wanna keep going to add a few more design details, then keep watching. In the next video, I will show you how to add in the angled edges at the top and the rounded edges at the bottom of the blade and how to remove the, um, the spine, that paraboloid, from the back of the blade just like it is in the drawing and in the real part. Okay, so in the first part of the blade design, we used shapes like building blocks to create our blade. Now we're going to do something similar, but we're going to use the same kinds of shapes as holes to cut our blades to make these new features. So the first feature I'm going to make is these angled edges at the top of the blade, and I'm going to make a triangular cutout. It needs to be a right triangle with a height of 2.5 millimeters and a 75 degree angle. I can use trigonometry to find the length of the base using tan. There is a wedge shape in the library, which is a right triangle, just like we want. So I'll use that and make a work plane on the front of the blade and drag the wedge in. I change the dimensions to 2.5 millimeter height and 9.3 millimeter base. Then we need to rotate the triangle so it is in the direction that we want. Next, we need to align the triangle to get it exactly in the corner of the blade, but we can only align to the top, middle or bottom of the whole blade part. So first we need to ungroup the rectangle from the cylinder part at the top. I'm going to remove the rest of the part out of the way and then group them together so that their alignment stays good. Then I align the top of the triangle to the top of the rectangle and align the right sides too. Depending on where your shapes are, you can get some weird things happening with the alignment. So if everything goes wrong for you, then just ungroup everything and realign the parts one at a time, making sure to align the triangles to the rectangle before you align them to the cylinder and the paraboloid. So then you need to make that triangle a hole and group it to cut through. The next feature we'll do is the rounded edges at the bottom of the blade. We need to make a cut that looks like this, this missing part here, but there's no shape in the library that looks like that, so we need to make one. If we take a square and cut a circle out of the middle, then the corner of that will look like the shape that we need to cut out. So first take a block, then a cylinder. The rounded edge has a three millimeter radius, so we need to make the diameter of the circle double that six millimeters by six millimeters. Then the block should be a square shape, also with six millimeter sides. We'll align the centers of these two parts and then make the cylinder a hole and group them so the cylinder cuts the block. 
Now we have the shape we need, but we also have some extras that we don't need. So I'm going to make a larger block and rotate it 45 degrees and drag it to line up with the place where the edges of the circle are just touching the edges of the square. Um, if you can't get it exactly right, then you can change uh, how big the grid is to get it in the right place. Then I'll make the big square a hole and cut off the parts that we don't need by grouping them together. So there, that is our rounded edge that we want to use to cut through the rectangle. So we need to make this shape a hole and we're going to need two of them. So I'll copy and paste and then make the copy a mirror image of the first using the mirror tool. Then we align the parts to the edge and the bottom of the rectangle and also the centers to make sure that that edge is going to cut through the whole thickness of the rectangle. There's no need to ungroup anything this time. We group everything together uh, to make the cut and then repeat on the other side. And now we have beautiful rounded corners just like the real blade. The next feature will be to remove the central spine from the back of the blade. We make a work plane on the back of the blade and drag a block shape on. Give this block the same dimensions as your rectangle. So mine is 20 millimeters by 151.5 millimeters. Then we align the bottom and center, we make it a hole and we group them. And there, the spine is gone. But there's just one last feature I'm gonna copy and that is a little bit of extra material that we have on the, back of the bottom of the cylinder here where the blade attaches into the hub. The real blade has a little circular piece of material here and I'm worried that if I don't add this, that the sharp corner might crack when it's attached into the hub and the blade is loaded from the wind. So I'll make a work plane on that surface on the bottom of the cylinder and use the paraboloid again. It needs a diameter of 6.3 millimeters. I align it and then I think I'll add five millimeters of height. That looks great, so I will group everything and I also wanna make it red so it looks just like the original. And now I wanna show you how to make just one more change if you would like, this part is totally optional. I'm gonna make the blade a little bit taper so that it is thinner at the tip than at the place where it attaches to the hub. So to do this, I'll take a block and lengthen it and then rotate it just a little bit. I'll make it 2.5 degrees. Then I'm gonna make it a hole. I'm gonna make a copy and mirror it and then align the tops of these parts and group them. Finally, I'll position them roughly where I want to cut the sides and align, the, align with the center of the blade so that the cuts are symmetrical and then group everything to make the cut through the blade. Now we have a tapered blade, which looks a little bit more like the blades that you'll see on real wind turbines. I wonder if it will make the stellar wind turbine more efficient. Okay, great. So then once you've got the blade where you like it, you need to export it. Um, you click on export and I need an STL file. Um, the file that you need will depend on what 3D printer or laser cutter that you're using. So that is the end of this tutorial and I hope that you're going to take what you've learned here and experiment with new blade designs to see if you can make a more efficient blade design than the ones that come with the Stellar Kit. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.